This is Tavis Rudd, and he's going to be talking to us about using Python to code by voice. Welcome, hey. Tavis. Sound check. Sound check. And my co-speaker, Alex, here, who will pop up occasionally throughout the talk. Thank you for coming. Oh. One second. Okay, now that I've turned the mic back off, uh, the entire talk is going to be inside of Emacs. I don't have any pretty slides. <laughs> There's been lots of those throughout the rest of the conference. Okay, so yes, I really do do this. I code by voice. Um, pretty much anything you could do in the terminal, in Vim, in Emacs, I do by voice. That was my microphone waking up and hearing this. This is my setup at home uh, screens. The keyboard's there, but I'm not touching it, just using the mic. So, start off with a couple questions for you. How many people have had uh, too much typing disease? Stick your hands way up. How many people haven't but uh, want to prevent it? Good. And uh, how many of you have tried voice recognition of any kind in the past? Uh, keep your hands up if you're impressed by it. <laughs> Not many. Okay, and uh, final question. How many people use Vim or Emacs? How many people don't? All right, I, I, I can't imagine doing what I do with this without either of those two. So if you're not one of those people and you want to do this, um, switch first. <laughs> <laughs> Your choice. <laughs> All right, so what to expect in this talk? Um, I do something which I call verbal Vim. It's inside of Emacs, but uh, it's sort of like Vim short keystrokes. It's very modal. Uh, you're not going to understand a lot of what I'm saying at first, and I apologize for breaking the probably the first rule of speaking, which is speak to your audience. I'm speaking to the computer in a made-up language using a combination of grunts and animal sounds and other weird made-up words. Um, but I'll try to give explanations after each one of the demos. Uh, but the main point even if you don't understand what I'm doing, is that it actually works. Okay, so a bit of backstory first. Uh, around January of 2010, just before my first PyCon, I tore my rotator cuff, shoulder muscle, rock climbing. Uh, and for years, I think rock climbing had been keeping the too much typing disease at bay. So when I rested my shoulder and the rest of my body from rock climbing, uh, Typing slowly destroyed me and crunched me up like this. Muscles tightened up, nerves from my neck down to these two fingers on both hands uh, caused issues that led to my hands progressively going numb. Uh, come May of that year, I was at the point where I couldn't work anymore. Uh, so I, I had a lot of work to do. I had clients, I'm a contractor. Um, I couldn't stop working and just go off and rest and do nothing. Uh, and I made the horrible mistake of trying to continue working through the pain. Uh, if you are experiencing RSI or do in the future, remember, don't try to work through it. Do something serious um, to look into ways of mitigating the effects of it or to avoid uh, the cause of it in the first place. For me, eventually it was dictation to avoid the cause of it. I started off that year, which I'd previously done this from previous too much typing, uh, with various ways of, of attempting to get rid of the, the source of the trouble. I had a very expensive, fancy Kinesis keyboard, wasted many hours remapping all the keys on it to make it optimal. Uh, if you didn't see her talk previously, it's awesome. Uh, you should watch the video. Um, I wish I had had that. Uh, fancy chair, no mouse. If uh, Ergonomic specialists had come in, looked at my setup, they would have said, thumbs up, you're all good. Still didn't help. So I tried to foot pedal. And then eventually I started using uh, an old key, uh, sorry, an old Dell keyboard. Almost all the keys ripped off and just a couple left there as my alt, my meta, my extra uh, additional keys. Nah, still didn't help. 
so come May, when I realized that I, I couldn't work through this, I had to stop, I had to give my body time to rest, I was panicking. I didn't know if I was going to basically have to switch careers, do something different. Had a huge backlog of work, clients who were, where's our work? Features, features, come on, deliver. Uh, but I couldn't do it. So I thought, as a long shot, let's try Dragon and see if uh, it's any good. I tried it previously, 2008. Uh, and I knew that out of the box, modern versions of Dragon Naturally Speaking uh, were incredible for English pros, probably for Spanish, other languages as well. If you're inside of Microsoft Word or Outlook or any of that crap. Uh, coding? uh, -uh. Didn't work at all. Uh, there was too much legwork in terms of setting up all the, the weird uh, things you might have to input, like curly braces and parens. And, uh, like you're not going to code by saying letter, 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 left paren, argument, argument, right paren. Too slow. But I had nothing else, so I thought I'd try it. And fortunately, I discovered that the Windows version of Dragon is hackable. There's Python inside of it, or you can install an extension that basically injects Python right into Dragon's event loop, and you write, using the second item there, Dragonfly, uh, grammars that are essentially just big dictionaries of things you might say and things you want the computer to do, whether that's typing keystrokes into a window, um, triggering a Python function, a callback of some sort, or in my case, calling into Elisp and uh, calling macros. So Dragonfly, it's LGPL. Uh, hasn't seen an update in a while, but it works fantastically. Uh, here's an example of it. The uh, first bit up here is just setting up the context. This is actually an example I've ripped from the Dragonfly homepage, saying uh, Firefox reader, or Firefox but not Google reader. I thought it was very appropriate, given the timing of real reader. <laughs> um, <Too soon>. Yeah. <laughs> so this here is an example of the mapping dictionary. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of stuff that I'm not going to go into there. Of things that the the author of this might say in keystrokes. Uh, I usually don't rely purely on keystrokes, but in his case, he is uh, that he wants typed into those windows. So, two months later, uh, it was working slowly for me. I sort of bootstrapped it and got the very basics working. I was no longer spelling things out two syllables at a time, and uh, I could do basic stuff in the shell. Uh, and I realized that it was actually going to work. I wasn't there yet. I had a lot of work ahead of me to get it to full productivity. Uh, but after three months, I felt like I was, I was good enough to work again. Um, and I kept on going. Until a year later, my injuries were gone. Uh, my hands weren't numb and freezing all the time. My shoulder was healed. Uh, but I kept on going. I, I didn't need to use the dictation, but it was good enough that I kept on going. Dude, less talk, more demo. <laughs> You're probably thinking the same, so let's get to it. Uh, three years later, today, I'm still using it between 40 and 60% of my time. So first demo. I might have to adjust the microphone volume as we go here to make sure my voice on the speakers doesn't feed back into here twice. Okay, so I'm just going to do some Emacs lift to start. Xbuff. Slap, slap, delt, jive dust testing. Doll. Slap, leap, PyCon. Slap. Pa, jive message string, snap, lee, jive message string, space, scratch, space, bard, sword, chuk, pa, quote. Just going to throw some errors in to show you that it's actually real. This is a very simple demo. Eval to fun, copy to fun name, run command, kink, slap. Oops. Run command. Yank. Slap. Humans rule the world and robots hate it. 
<laughs> Boof. Ming. Chuk. Robots will never rule the world. Hey, bite my shiny metal ass. You couldn't afford it, honey. <laughs> so I, I figured if I'm going to be giving a talk where the demo gods are against me, I'm doing live voice coding. I may as well personify the demo gods. <laughs> Meet Alex. Just testing. Eval to fun. Snap. Eval to fun. Run command. Yank. Slap. Just testing. To show you that it actually was that same code. Outermost, slurp. Lock dragon. Okay, so the second demo, a lot of people ask, okay, that's good for uh, triggering snippets and relying on Emacs features, but what about variables? How do I do variables? They're actually really easy. Camel, this is a test. Slap. Slap. Studly, this is a test. Slap. Jive, this is a test. Slap. Dot word, this is a test. Quit, slap, score, this is a test. Mara, chuk, osh, dot, camel creation timestamp, slap, snore, and so on. So long as you're using English words, uh, it works. Wake up, Mara, chuk, bury buff, unbury buff. Org source exit. Next slide. Snore. <laughs> You're supposed to say go to sleep, but nah, snore. <laughs> okay, so what about um, bash and the terminal and SSH and all that sort of stuff? Well, wake up. Get termy. Not that one. <laughs> If you know him. <laughs> Termi. Merkstat. Slap. Merkdiff. Slap. Queen. Oink. Run H top. Pound. Queen. Oink. D message. Spipe. Say grep. Spivish. Duplex, slap. Term quit. Uh, okay, well, what about jumping directories? Termy, term jump, slash, tay mic palm, lerd, tay mic palm, slap. Oop. Term jump, quit, quit, term jump. Slash, tay, mic, palm, slap, slap, lee, slap, hoop, slap, term, quit. Okay, SSH, local root term, term, quit, snore. Uh, and I've got snippets for various bash things that I do frequently. Um, Sysamin's probably one of those things that I could spend more time tweaking the grammar. Uh, but for things I'm doing frequently, I've just got voice commands that go straight to what I want to do. Wake up. Next slide. Snore. Okay, as I mentioned before, it's sort of a verbal vim. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details, but here are some of the commands that I'm using, voice commands. Wake up. Next slide. You think you are so smart because you got Emacs to listen to your voice. Child's play. I taught him to read my mind. 
and it's optimized for low-level stuff. Um, a lot of people who've tried doing something that's more like long-form prose to code. I decided to go the opposite way and optimize for the low-level stuff, uh, character twiddling. Um, how do we search and jump and do all the stuff you do more often than actually writing code? Snore. I've got over 2,000 voice commands. <coughs> Triggering various things such as keystrokes, text, snippets. Um, I've got Elisp in here, Python code, Apple Script, Bash, and the list goes on. Flip. PyShow classes. Frain, Owen. Quit, Owen. Snore. This is a, a listing of the classes in my grammar file. Uh, it's like 3,000 lines of things for various stuff I work on. Emacs, uh, some client-specific stuff, and so on. Very easy to extend. Wake up, queen, flip. Next slide. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly show you some code navigation. Flip. Swuff. Slap. Search class. Snap. Search super. Snap. Nord. Left. Mesp. Tark. Sark dot. Tark. Snark. Hark. Yark. Mark class, Tark, Snore. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going keep it, to keep it at that, but there's lots of low-level jumping around and marking and selecting. Wake up, flip. Uh, grep, I trigger inside of Emacs by voice. Next slide. Snore. Okay, so for my main demo, I'm gonna modify the speech recognition grammar on the fly and uh, teach Alex here a Monty Python skit. <laughs> Wake up. X buff. Two slap. Hark chook. Class dead parrot. Studly mapping rule. Snore. Uh, and I'm just keeping the code up above so I can remember uh, amongst my stage fright what I'm supposed to be writing. Wake up. Y'all clap. Mapping equal dict. Slap, slap. For line and enumerated lines. Snap, snap. Tab, lape, quote. Say Alex part. Pa, percent soy. Right, percent. Numbers, lack. Ish, right, camera line, bard, mesp, lape, score say Alex, X buff, slap, slap, chook, grammar dot add rule, studly dead parrot, scratch, studly dead parrot, lape, load this grammar, and Alex part zero. Look, maybe I know a dead parent when I see one, and I am looking at one right now. Alex part one. Now that is what I call a dead parrot. Alex part two. This is an ex parrot. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't work well with contractions and occasional things like that. Org source exit. Next slide. Snore. Okay, so in conclusion, I hope I convince you it does work. Um, this is very short snippet. I've got it working for multiple other languages. Um, for pretty much anything, as I said earlier, that you would be doing with your hands or with your stenograph stenographic keyboard, I do with this thing. Uh, I don't use it all the time, because uh, you do get voice strain. Uh, and I'm sucking on a, a candy right now to make sure that my voice doesn't go dry. I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, so if you are suffering from RSI right now, do something about it. Uh, it it'll just get worse. 
if you keep on going. Uh, and I hope I've convinced you that this is a viable option to avoid the suffering. Uh, but it's not just for cripples. Uh, my injuries were healed two years ago, and I still use this between 40 and 60% of my time. Um, and most of the work that I had to do here was not deep technical problems. It was plumbing and last mile efforts. Um, people of very smart people, much smarter than me, have worked on this for a long time, and the foundations are there. And I would expect uh, Star Trek computer-like fantasies to come real very soon. Um, Siri is kind of laughable at times, but it's a sign of where things are going. Um, voice recognition is serious and ready for prime time. Stop, you attention horror. Hey audience, I am sick of pair programming with this fool. I am accepting applications for his replacement. <laughs> I'm going to go straight to some frequently asked questions rather than calling for questions from the mic. It's not much time. Um, so yeah, I'm serious. I actually do it. Can you do it? Uh, it honestly did take some effort. Uh, there's 2,000 commands that I've added to this thing, but the basics getting up to the level where you can bootstrap it and get talking to Vim if you want to or to whatever program you're using uh, is not very hard. Um, I haven't shown you this here, but I'm doing it in a very complicated way with a three-headed beast. I've got head number one, Windows XP, running Dragon inside of it. Um, and that bar across the top of the screen is Dragon. Uh, I don't know if you could do this with the Mac version. So if Windows really scares you and you really have to have open source or Mac or whatever, that might be a stumbling block. Um, Training to get to the point of productivity, probably two months. Uh, and you need a good memory to remember all the voice commands. Uh, but I think that's a given with it. Pro programmers have good memories. <laughs> He's not even plugged in right now. That was my, I have um, touch by gestures. I touched the wrong thing. Uh, voice train is an issue. Um, don't try to dictate before your coffee in the morning. Uh, and don't do it for 10 hours a day, but don't type for 10 hours a day. Uh, what languages does it work for? Anything you want. Uh, it works probably the best for lisps. They're very structured syntax, and I can jump around and select and mark stuff extremely easily. Um, remote machines, yes, it does work. Um, the Emacs instance that we're inside of here is running in a separate VM from the recognition system. Uh, I run it from my box at home as well, over the network, works fine. Um, and if you have a good mic, and this is critical, uh, a mic like this one here, it's the one that the Chili's use on a very loud stage, will allow you to work in coffee shops uh, with coworkers, with a wife who walks up and says, RM minus RF. <laughs> so yeah, it does work. Uh, can you use the open source Sphinx, uh, CMU Sphinx engine? Um, I couldn't. Maybe you can. Uh, I think it's probably very difficult to get that working. Um, and the Mac version, I mentioned that before. Uh, the question that everyone, besides poking me saying, dude, you should do a speech about this, it's, dude, where's the code? Um, there's a lot of duct tape in there right now. In fact, What's inside you? Doc tape. <laughs> oh, and the cat. Uh, so I, I've been kind of embarrassed by how duct tapey it is, but I'm going to rip out the core bits and pieces and stick it up on GitHub. Um, I promise sometime in the next four months. Thank you. Hey. Do we have time for questions, sir? Yes, five minutes for questions. If you oh yeah, if you got questions, head on up. 
I'm doing the not a question but a thing okay. thing. Um, if you call Dragon, they'll give you Dragon for like half the retail price. Oh. Like just by waffling a little bit when you're like, oh, maybe I'll go to the store and buy it. They'll be like, <laughs> how about half price? Just wanted to let yeah. I, I, I uh, found this by accident. I was so impressed with Dragon uh, that I was quite happy to pay the full price. Uh, the software is phenomenal. It may not work for coding out of the box, but for what it does, it's excellent software. Okay. Sorry, super quick. I, I couldn't figure out from the website what version I have 12. Will it work with 12? Or uh, apparently only? it does. Okay. Natlink, the lowest level of the, the layers of libraries that I'm wrapping around Dragon, does work with 12 now. I'm using 11. Uh, so I was curious how you came up with your, like some of the short commands they use, because obviously they're not like the short end thing. Is it just, like, is there any rhyme to the reason? or uh, Some or of them, like the lace, <laughs> lace, race, lape, rape, they're matching ones. Uh, some of them, like, I didn't even get into my weird GNU screen setup here. I've got, like, multiple levels of nested GNU screens, and I say chirp, twerp, oink, uh, hoot, woot, various animal sounds to navigate. I, it's fun. It's optimized for fun. <laughs> What went into preparing to give a speech with the possibility of a PA system and feedback and making sure it would actually work when you demoed? This mic. Uh, so Dan saw me give a, a very impromptu demo last year using a, a, a mic like this guy. Um, way too sensitive, picks up way too much background noise. You need an expensive, sorry to say this, $300 um, noise cancelling mic that basically hears the funnel, the cone, there to your mouth, and nothing off to the side. It has to be a very directional mic or it's going to not work in an environment like this. Good. Yeah. In um, private environments, it's good. One more? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Um, I'm going to quickly... In the time of the last question, uh, just show you a couple other things in IPython. IPython Dentel. Osh. Holler. Osh. Equal pop. Slap. Osh. Dot. Camel creation timestamp. Slap. Osh. Dot. Say script. Slap. Cap order. Dot. Count. Say count. Quit. Say count. Quit. Okay, that is an error I triggered on purpose. Um, you can get too carried away with your grammar, and you can add things that clash with things you're trying to say. Um, it's one issue that when you spend a couple months getting proficient, you'll run into quite a bit. Holerp. Holerp. Term quit. Slap. Lock Dragon. Okay, thank you. It was dictation to avoid the cause of it. I started off that year, which I'd previously done this from previous too much typing, uh, with various ways of, of attempting to get rid of the, the source of the trouble. I had a very expensive, fancy Kinesis keyboard. Wasted many hours remapping all the keys on it to make it optimal. Uh, if you didn't see her talk previously, it's awesome. Uh, you should watch the video. Um, I wish I had had that. Uh, fancy chair, no mouse. If a ergonomic specialist had come in, looked at my setup, they would have said, thumbs up, you're all good. Still didn't help. So I tried to foot pedal. And then eventually I started using uh, an old key, uh, sorry, an old Dell keyboard. Almost all the keys ripped off and just a couple left there as my alt, my meta, my extra uh, additional keys. Nah, still didn't help. Uh, so come May, when I realized that I had Vim in Emacs, I do by voice. That was my microphone waking up and hearing this. This is my setup at home, uh, screens. The keyboard's there, but I'm not touching it, just using the mic. So, start off with a couple questions for you. How many people have had uh, too much typing disease? Stick your hands way up. 
How many people haven't but uh, want to prevent it? Good. And uh, how many of you have tried voice recognition of any kind in the past? Uh, keep your hands up if you're impressed by it. <laughs> Not many. Okay, and uh, final question. How many people use Vim or Emacs? How many people don't? All right, I, I, I can't imagine doing what I do with this without either of those two. So if you're not one of those people and you want to do this... Uh... This is Tavis Rudd, and he's going to be talking to us about using Python to code by voice. Welcome, hey. Tavis. Sound check. Sound check. And my co-speaker, Alex, here, who will pop up occasionally throughout the talk. Thank you for coming. Oh. One second. Okay, now that I've turned the mic back off, uh, the entire talk is going to be inside of Emacs. I don't have any pretty slides. <laughs> There's been lots of those throughout the rest of the conference. Okay, so yes, I really do do this. I code by voice. Um, pretty much anything you could do in the terminal is at bay. So when I rested my shoulder and the rest of my body from rock climbing, uh, typing slowly destroyed me and crunched me up like this. Muscles tightened up, nerves for my neck, down to these two fingers on both hands uh, caused issues that led to my hands progressively going numb. Uh, come May of that year, I was at the point where I couldn't work anymore. Uh, so I, I had a lot of work to do. I had clients, I'm a contractor. Um, I couldn't stop working and just go off and rest and do nothing. Uh, and I made the horrible mistake of trying to continue working through the pain. Uh, if you are experiencing RSI or do in the future, remember, don't try to work through it. Do something serious um, to look into ways of mitigating the effects of it or to avoid uh, the cause of it in the first place. For me, eventually, it will switch first. <laughs> <laughs> Your choice. <laughs> All right, so what to expect in this talk? Um, I, I do something which I, I call verbal Vim. It's inside of Emacs, but uh, it's sort of like Vim short keystrokes. It's very modal. Uh, you're not going to understand a lot of what I'm saying at first, and I apologize for breaking the probably the first rule of the speaking, which is speak to your audience. I'm speaking to the computer in a made-up language using a combination of grunts and animal sounds and other weird made-up words. Um, but I'll try to give explanations after each one of the demos. Uh, but the main point, even if you don't understand what I'm doing, is that it actually works. Okay, so a bit of backstory first. Uh, around January of 2010, just before my first PyCon, I tore my rotator cuff, shoulder muscle, rock climbing. Uh, and for years, I think rock climbing had been keeping the too much typing disease